What's up guys? Welcome back to the ranch. Wait a second. There I am. All right. Let me take some of this PPE off. We'll get back to that in a second. What are we doing today, guys? Well, we're gonna put in some switchgrass and I'm gonna do it with just a backpack sprayer and then a cedar or a spreader. I don't know what you like to call it. I seem to call it back and forth. You figure it out. So anyway, backpack sprayer, just taking an area right behind me that's along the perimeter of my property. We're only about, I don't know, 10 yards off my perimeter of my property. I have an ATV road that runs here and I have a two foot section, uh, a 200 foot section strip here that's wide open into my property where the switchgrass ended and my forest begins back here as you can see. And we're gonna spray this down and kill it today. This is our first spraying. What we're gonna do with this switchgrass area is nothing, just spray. No tilling, no mowing, no nothing. It is May 20th, we're gonna come in here and spray and kill this. We're gonna come through three times during the course of the summer and really just get this like brown and dead to the dirt. And that's the only process we're gonna do now in the whole summer is just spray this three times. Now in May, probably do it when I plant my buckwheat in middle of June. And then we're gonna hit it again at the end of the summer, just to make sure it's dead going into fall and totally just have this. It's gonna look like you should set this on fire and it's gonna be gone. What I'm spraying with is a combination of 2,4-D and glyphosate. Uh, it's like two parts glyphosate and one part uh, 2,4-D. The glyphosate kills anything that's growing immediately. The 2,4-D is gonna go into the ground and prevent anything from coming back. The first two sprayings are gonna be this common, uh, this combination. And the third spraying is just gonna be glyphosate. Anything that's green at that point, at the end of the summer, we just wanna get rid of. And glyphosate or Roundup is the same thing. The 2,4-D, I can include a link of what I'm using at the bottom of my page. I got it off of Amazon. It is expensive, yes, but I'm doing small areas here on the ranch. I'm not doing sprawling acres of, of switchgrass. I'm putting in screening in my open fields here to help me get along the edge of my property and screen out my food plot that's about 200 yards that way, straight across from me. So I can get around into the woods. All right, let's get to spraying. Quick thing, always when using spraying, wear some protective gear. Gloves, mask, goggles. You should be working with the wind as I drop everything, you should be working with the wind. You don't want to spray and have it blow back into your face. You also want to try to spray and walk away from what you're spraying so you're not walking through the chemicals as you do it. I am no professional by any means, but I am taking what I see as some minimum safety precautions. Again, I do this all for the process. I am not a professional, but I get some stuff done around here on the ranch. All right, that's my stick on some safety gear that you should be wearing, gloves, goggles, mask, work with the wind. All right, now let's get to spraying as I lose my glasses again. All right. Here's the end of my switchgrass and it kind of dies down and we didn't quite make it all the way to my woods straight there. So we're going to spray this section and seed this in the winter. We're gonna frost seed this. But right now we need to spray and kill it here in May. It is May 20th and we need to spray and kill about a 10 foot wide section. And this is probably about, I don't know, 200 feet. So let's get the spraying. So in this step, I'm spraying and going backwards, about a 10 foot swath, because that's all I need for screening in my switchgrass. And as I turn around, you could see, wearing some PPE, gloves, 
mask, safety goggles, and I'm keeping mind of the wind because you got to take some extra steps when working with chemicals like this just to make sure it doesn't get on you if you can prevent it. And I'm going to spray back and forth nice and slowly. I'm working along my two ATV roads. I have one on the pro pri pri yeah. I have one on the perimeter of the property here. And I have one that turns from the perimeter and goes straight up the middle of my property. We don't use that one during the hunting season. That's a summer road only. And I'm spraying about 10 feet across, working my way. Nice and slow, nice and evenly. And we're just going to try to kill all of this down as much as possible. We will have to spray three times. Not today, three times total over the course of the summer. Ranchers, we're back and it is now June 11th and it is about three and a half weeks since we first sprayed and you could see the glyphosate 2,4-D combo really took everything down. And it is three weeks later, and we're going to hit it again with our second spraying, but just glyphosate. No 2,4-D in this whole area again. Real quick, safety goggles, safety gloves, and a mask. And we're going to get in here, and we're going to spray again for our second spraying. Now this spraying should be a little easier. You could see what you missed and hit that better. You also have most of the stuff dead and down now. So you're just catching what's still green or what's trying to now sprout. And we're just gonna spray this out. Nice and easy, no big deal. Spraying. As I walk backwards, not to walk through my spray. There's no wind today. It's nice and dry. So we should get a real good spray and kill on this section for our switchgrass. This is a great moment in time to catch what you missed or spots that you want to maybe expand a little bit of your spraying into. The idea is we just want to kill this down and get it to expose that soil so we can frost seed in the winter our switchgrass right into a weed free zone. I did one more spraying like this for a third spraying on August 6th, but decided to leave that video out to save some time as the video was getting long. What's up guys? Doing a check-in now. It is September 17th and I wanted to show you we did those three sprayings that you saw and we're going into the fall now with a totally dead nothing growing plot where our switchgrass will be frost seeded in the next step. So this is it. Our soil has been prepped. It's been controlled from weed and vegetation, completely stripped and open. And now the ground is all set, open to receive our seed during frost seeding, which should be our next step. I wanted to check in and show you. Still dead, and I've done nothing but the three sprayings at this point. All right, stay tuned. Look at when we dive in, what the ground looks like. All dead and wide open. This is exactly how you need the soil and ground to look when we enter our next step 
of frost seeding. Good morning. All right, guys, I know it's been a quick fade for you, but for me, it's been a few months. And what are we doing today? Well, it's December 11th, and we're here to seed the switchgrass you saw me prep. What? I know you're thinking, I see snow out there. What do you mean seed? Well, we're gonna frost seed that. And what is frost seeding? We're gonna take this ground that's frozen now at 27 degrees here in upstate New York. The pores of the ground are nice and open, and we're gonna walk over and we're gonna seed right across the top of that. What happens is the seed falls into the pores that are open from the frost, and they'll sit there, and when the ground thaws on the warmer winter days, the seed gets pulled in by the thaw and gets put into the ground at a perfect depth, which frost seeding mimics nature, so we're doing that. Now, I know what you're also thinking is, well, great, you're talking about the ground open and stuff. I see a coating of snow. Well, snow is fine. It's still temperature that causes the heaving and frosting of the ground to make it frozen. In fact, a little bit of snow like this is not really a problem. You can see the seed on the ground as you spread it, which kind of almost helps for a little bit of an even seed. I don't personally like to seed on thick snow, but a little coating like this for me is fine. If you wanted to see frost seeding without snow on the ground, I made a video a little ways back. I could include that as part of this um, links and in the description of the video. Thanks for hanging in there. Let's jump into seeding this ground and getting it set for us to get switchgrass that'll come in and be just like this stuff that's standing here in the winter giving us our security and cover coming around the edge of my property. All right, so this is our switchgrass seed. It is a very, very tiny seed. So this is why you can frost seed it really well. I mean, look at it in contrast to my terrible finger. It is um, totally small and falls right into the pores of the frozen ground and gets pulled in and freeze and thaw, mimicking that nature process to plant this without machinery. And the other thing about this, this is a very hard seed, so it needs to be exposed to elements like this for a little while before it'll germinate. So if you just tried to put this in the ground, say in that end of May, June, you're not gonna get a lot of growth because this seed needs to stratify or scarify or you know, be exposed to the elements to get that growth started. You know, it, it helps crack the seed and lets the roots go out of that crack and, and start the germination process. We'll be using this seed this year on this little section of switchgrass. This is the Whitetail Habitat Solution Perma Clover, per Perma Cover, not Clover, totally different video. And uh, this is the northern blend because here in upstate New York, we are north. And very excited to try this product. I'm sure if you're watching my video, you scrolled past uh, a few of Mr. Jeff Sturgis's videos. Um, great, great videos, love his stuff. In fact, I would highly recommend you watch some of his stuff if you're not. And we're gonna give his, his blend, his seal of approval, switchgrass, a try to add to my current switchgrass that I have here that's looking beautiful in the winter. So let's get to seeding. So while I'm doing this and setting up, I wanted to say thanks for watching this video. I know it's a long one, but um, sometimes some long form videos are nice to see on, on the channel. Really uh, gives you a one stop presentation. But we're coming to the end and I appreciate you hanging in there. So we're coming up here to start our switch. And you wanna open up your spreader or seeder to the littlest seed rate because this stuff is tiny and will come out really quickly. Again, with a little bit of snow, I could kind of see it hitting the ground. See that I'm getting some good coverage. And we're gonna get this in there. Now snow 
not too much of a problem for me like this because it'll push the seed into the ground further, especially we're getting a little more snow tonight here in upstate New York. This wasn't supposed to start until later, but uh, you know, Mother Nature does her thing. You can only try to work with her. All right, guys, so as I'm seeding, I do a nice zigzag pattern, and then I'll walk up and down in rows. I'm minding the snow to see how my spreading is going. And I'm using the smallest setting to not allow too much seed out at one time. Otherwise, you'll get a big clump and it won't be evenly distributed. All right, ranchers, so that's frost seeding. We got the seed on the ground and now we just wait. Switch grass will take the elements and mimic mother nature by pulling the seed into the ground. It also needs to get wet and do its thing to help break down the seed encasing, a scarification, a stratification process to allow for good germination. I'm real excited to use this product this year by the Whitetail Habitat Solutions. Very excited to see what it does. Thanks for watching Frost Seeding and stay tuned. Ranchers, welcome to March, or I should say April, because it's March 28th. And what are we doing here at our switchgrass spot? Well, we survive winter and we're up to our next little step in the switchgrass process. And that is to break out our sprayer again and start spraying it with a pre-emergent, either Simazine or Atrazine. I'm gonna be using Atrazine and I can show you what that looks like. And before everything greens up, we're gonna hit it with two quarts per acre, or in my case, I used about five ounces per gallon of atrazine or simazine, a pre-emergent, meaning that before things green up, you get this chemical on the ground and it's gonna kill anything that tries to green up. Wait a second, what about my switchgrass? Well, the switchgrass is not coming in early part of the spring at that first sign of green up. We want to control that, knock those weeds off the table. So when our switchgrass pops out, probably here in New York, mid-June, once the soil temperatures get warm enough and the weather becomes more summer-like, some of that weed has been knocked back, giving our switchgrass a great chance to emerge out of the ground and jump ahead of all that weed competition. Because switchgrass, as you can see, is a little bit of a process and you don't want it to get choked out. Weeds are its biggest issue. All right, so let's get to spraying. And we're spraying again. Fun video of me spraying a bunch of grass, huh? All right, well, this is it. After this, there's nothing else we do but wait. All right, our pre-emergent is down as you saw me spray. Now we just wait for things to green up and switch grass to sprout. What's up guys? Welcome to the last day of April, kicking off the turkey season here in upstate New York tomorrow. Couldn't be more excited, saw Tom in the backyard today. I'm sure he flew south for the entire month of May, but we're gonna try our luck on him tomorrow. Checking in with our switchgrass, our epic video that's going on. So as you can see from this section over here, spring has greened up. But take a look with what hasn't greened up. Our simazine has worked. And we have now knocked back the green up on our switchgrass area, which is what we want to do as we now wait for it to sprout. Probably in the coming month, June, end of June for here in New York once we get some hotter temperatures. All right guys, that was a quick check-in and what this looks like with spring green up not happening on our switchgrass because our simazine or atrazine pre-emergent has worked. 
stay tuned. Now I know there was a guy in the back who was like, oh, but I see some green. Yeah, all right, you sit down, be quiet. Look at the hard line of green right here. Look at the difference. So, no pre-emergent, pre-emergent. Look at the difference. So our switch on this side now in this whole section is way jumped ahead of the weeds. It's natural en enemy. So hopefully next month we get a big jump on this, nice clean growth, and we'll have a great stand of switchgrass. What's up ranchers? Welcome back. It's August 17th. We're coming on like the year mark on our epic switchgrass adventure. And I'm proud to say the switchgrass is up. We had to wait all the way till the end of July for it to sprout. And now in mid August, on August 17th, we have a nice stand of our first year switchgrass popping up. And I know what you're saying. Well, it's only about two feet tall. I can't hide behind it. No, first year switch, you're not gonna hide, up, hide behind it. But that's what makes this a great screening. It comes back and gets taller. So next year, this is coming in and will be even taller and be set for us next year. I'm happy with what I'm seeing. As you can see off to the side of the camera, the weeds are still suppressed. Look how tall the goldenrod and weeds are to that side. It's like three feet tall here. Everything that's in the switch is actually below the switch. So that's awesome. What I will do is probably in the spring, hit it again with a pre-emergent one more time, maybe mow it once and that's it. So let's dive in and take a look at our first year switch and what popped up. All right, guys, here's our switchgrass. Super happy at what I'm seeing. You can see the weeds in the background, all taller than this. It's um, not super clean, let's per se, but I'm really happy at the way it's coming in. And what I'll do is I'll come back in the spring and I'll hit it with uh, a little pre-emergent again. I may mow it once next summer and that's it, man. This should pop up and come in really nice once we get into next season. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for sticking in on this really long adventure with no till, no drill. Before I go, I wanted to show you a shot with me standing back a little bit in the switchgrass to show you how tall some of the better swaths are. And they're about 30 inches tall, so a little over uh, two feet tall. And then the rest of them are about over the knee at a good 18 inches. So this is what it looks like in the switchgrass year one from a far shot. All right, guys, thanks for hanging in on this super long adventure of putting switchgrass in with no till, no drill, just broadcasting it in. And this is it. I'm super happy at what's coming in. And next year, this will look even better. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for following along. If you give me a like, I really appreciate it. Get out there, broadcast some switch, and put in some screening that'll last for seasons to come.